Okay guys, I just showed you an update. So you ready? We're gonna make a beautiful uh, smoky cheese. But this is gonna be a very light cheese. And then I'm gonna show you the surprise that I use when I make this cheese. So I'm starting off with a big batch because you see, I gotta keep this going. Cause cheese, like, you know how um, vegans have a hard time giving up cheese? Well, let me tell you something. Once you start eating vegan cheese, <laughs> It's the same thing. You just want it and you want more of it. I mean, eating too much cheese, if you know nuts on, um, they're a little on the acidic side, but you're going to be very surprised about this cheese and how this cheese won't be acidic whatsoever. I am going to show you, um, I'm going to show you later what I'm going to do to this cheese. So uh, get ready because it's going to be, like I said, the bomb.com. Um, now, how much nuts... Do you want to use, you use a little bit of nuts, you're going to get a little bit of cheese. You use a lot of nuts, you're going to get a little more cheese. Uh, I don't remember if I soaked, because I've had this in the fridge for over a week. I'm not sure if I had uh, three cups of nuts assorted. I'm doing both cashew and uh, almonds. So it came to about four cups, but don't worry about how much nuts I have. The whole idea is that you want the paste when you're making your cheese. You want it firm. So you got to be easy on the water and you want to get it as creamy as possible and as thick as possible. So you start off with a little bit of water at a time because if you put too much water, you're going to have a soup and then you're going to have to drain the cheese and that's going to be another long process. I mean, it's not the end of the world. If you do make a mistake and it's too watery, well, then you drain it for a day and then you can do what you have to do. It's just going to be a longer process, but it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be a mess. It's not a mistake. Remember, there's no mistakes in life. Always a lesson learned. Okay, so we're going to start off with uh, these nuts, approximately three cups soaked that I have. And I'm going to put it in my... trusty Vitamix. Now, if you keep your nuts in the fridge in the fridge as long as I did, which is over a week, uh, you got to make sure to rinse these every day. Otherwise, you're going to get stinky water. Um, sometimes good stink and like a rejuvelac and sometimes a bad stink where you basically spoiled your nuts. So if you're going to keep them a long time to get them really soft, make sure to rinse that, uh, to rinse the water out. So here we go. I've got um, nice, about four cups of swollen nuts. So that's about three cups, if I'm not mistaken. And like I said, don't worry about the quantity because if you have two cups, just play it by ear. Use less water rather than a lot of water and then work your way up. Stop the machine, add a little extra water, and you're not going to go wrong, I promise you. Okay, to this, we're going to make this not so... Uh, strong tasting so we're gonna put just uh, I'm using a large clove of garlic because I have a lot of nuts there but you can use a small clove of garlic if you're using less nuts but my cloves is very very big so I'm gonna use about half of this my cloves are huge so I'm gonna use about half a clove, maybe a little more than half of garlic. We're going to use about a teaspoon and a half of salt, but if I need more salt, I will always add more. But I will let you know on the left side of the screen, the ingredients will be there. We're going to put two probiotics this time instead of the Rejuvelac. Because the rejuvelac will give you that stink and you this recipe you don't want it as stinky okay so we've got two without the shells guys do not put the capsules in just the just the powder there i go shaking you around what else is new sorry about that guys i'm always apologizing to you guys okay so uh i did two capsules right i am gonna put the juice of one lime. Now, if you 
have citric acid and you don't want to use uh, lime, you could put a little bit of citric acid. That's really up to you. I have plenty of lime, so I'm just going to use the juice of one lime. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to pour it in. And we're going to use a little bit of water. Now, how much water? I'm going to use a little and I'm going to work this uh, I'm going to work the nuts slowly. Okay, so I'm going to start off with just a bit and see how this is going to come out because I want this very pasty. So I'm not even using the full half a cup. I just have this on my side here and if I need it, I will add it, but I will not add it all at once because then you're going to have soup. Remember, we don't want soup. We want a pasty, a pasty, uh, pasty dough. So I'm not going to make you watch me mix this, but you want this to be very, very creamy. So if I need, um, if I need more water, I will add more water. Otherwise, I will not. So you have to be playing this by ear, guys. You have to use your judgment. Okay, look at this. I use about maybe a quarter cup of water to this mixture. Now, again, I can't put this in my mouth because I'm fasting for Pete's sake. My God, why am I creating these things when I don't eat? Does this make any sense to you? Okay, so I still feel there's little bits of nuts. That means I will still continue to process this. Now, what I'm going to add to this is a little bit of smoke. And I'm using mesquite because that's my favorite. And how much smoke is really up to you. If you like a smoky, you put more. And I'm going to put, where is it? About a tablespoon of coconut, fine coconut oil. Not a lot. You want about a tablespoon of, a heaping tablespoon, I guess, of coconut oil. And water, I use very little water, guys, so you have to be careful. You don't want to overwater it because, like I said, you're going to have a soup. You want this to be thick. I'm not sure if you can see it. Let me get a spatula to show you. Here it is. Do you see how thick that is? That is very thick. So I'm going to pass this through again. And then we're going to put this to ferment. Okay. And we're going to put our mixture there, and we're going to just lightly cover it. I will sprinkle some smoked salt. Now, if you don't have uh, smoked salt, that's okay. You don't have to use it. But if you can get some, or well, you can actually make some yourself. One day I'm going to have to show you how to make smoked salt. And the smoked salt, it's all about the wood. Whatever wood you use is going to be the flavors that it's going to pick up. Okay, a bigger spatula. So it really is simple. Making vegan cheese is not hard. And let me tell you guys, this stuff is so addictive. You're going to love this cheese. I call this my smoky ash cheese. Now you're probably wondering, ash, what do you mean ash? Yes, I'm going to be putting charcoal in my cheese and believe it or not what that cheese does JJ Erica can you my god this smells amazing I gotta be careful because if I get it on my finger first I have to apologize on my little rat over here because he barks at the twigs that fall off the trees Sorry, I'm not even in camera. Okay, let me get. I should show you what he looks like. Let me get this in and then I'll see if I can find him. Okay, so here we go. Now, I will sprinkle 
smoked sea salt on top of this cheese and I'm just going to cover it lightly. There we go. There we go. We're just going to cover it lightly and we're not going to tuck it. We're just going to let it ferment a whole day. That means come tomorrow, I'm going to take this. That's the routine, remember? After you did a whole day sitting outside fermenting, you're going to take this cheese and you're going to put it for a full day into the refrigerator. But you do need to get you do need to get activated charcoal because we're going to be putting activated charcoal in this cheese. And with the smoky taste and the charcoal, we're going to get a very nice ash cheese. And this, believe it or not, this charcoal, not only is it de detoxifying, that means it removes metals, heavy metals from your body. Not only is it detoxifying, but it will neutralize that acidity in the nuts because you know that all beans, our body is an alkaline body. Some foods that we eat will alka alkaline our body and that's what we need our body has to be a nice alkaline but some foods that we eat such as uh, people that eat meat uh, nuts seeds are very acidic uh, or we shouldn't be eating uh, dairy or meat because of the acidity in it so by putting uh, charcoal with your cheese you are actually alkalizing this cheese and it's good for your body so we're going to have fun making this cheese. We smoked it up. Now we're going to add the charcoal. Well, we're not going to add it today, but we will add it uh, come um, in two days because it's going to be one day out, one day in the fridge. So in two days, we're going to put this cheese together and I'm going to show you what a beautiful, beautiful cheese we're going to make. And for now, guess what I'm going to show you? I'm going to show you that little pest that's always barking. So hang in there. Okay, guys, let's go. I'm going to show you who that little pooper is. My daughter had to take him out. Do you see him? You see that little rat? Is my camera fuzzy? Yes, it is. JJ, why do you bark all the time, JJ? By the way, that's my daughter. That's vegan Hello. karma. <laughs> so, there's a little rat that's always causing all that barking. He's no bigger than a pea, but he barks like a Rottweiler. Say hello, say hello. Oh my God, oh, he's got a flat head. <laughs> he's got more hair than body, trust me. Gigi. So, JJ, you're on camera, JJ. Oh you're on God. camera, say hi. Are you gonna keep barking for mommy? Look, he doesn't bark now. He's terif- oh, oh, there he goes. It, I'm telling you, if you're not holding him and you let him down, he goes crazy. So anyhow, guys, I'll see you. Bye, Erica, so, love you. Bye. Thank you for bringing him outside for me. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you got to see my little pooper who's always barking. Bark the fleas. See, had him on camera, didn't bark once, right? He only does it when he's not supposed to. Anyhow, so here's the recipe, guys. I'm going to see you in a couple of days. I will post this one so you don't have to, like, sit there and watch the whole thing all at once. And a lot of you like my videos a little shorter. So I'm using this. I'm excited also. I've got um, a bamboo charcoal coming in. And I'm excited about that too, but that still didn't arrive. And um, if you can get some smoke, now this is Clubhouse, it's a smoked sea salt. That also helps if you want to add that in your, um, in your mixture. I did use my mesquite. That's the flavor that I used inside the mixture. And that's up to you how much you want to use it. You want to have some smoke taste to it, but you don't want it that you can't eat it because it's way too smoky. But remember, if it's not smoky enough on the um, on the inside, when we uh, when we're making our cheese, you could always sprinkle some on the outside. You could also sprinkle some when you're serving it. So don't worry. But when you see how beautiful this cheese is and how healthy it is for you, remember our bodies need to be. Uh, alkaline and this is the best way to eat your favorite cheese and it's going to be alkaline for you and along that this takes away any toxins in your body it will just pull it right out and you will be eliminating this uh, from your body so this is a plus 
And it's great to brush your teeth if you want to brush your teeth. I make toothpaste with it. So guys, I'm excited to share this recipe with you and I hope you're gonna like this one. And I'll see you soon.